Good morning. It's Thursday and it's our main harvest day. As you guys probably know if you watch my vlogs or weekly updates in the past. And I've been taking a little break from making videos this week mainly because I've been crazy busy. I gave Mark Monday and Tuesday off and so that meant that I was working the, shit, the work of two people on the farm for the earlier part of the week so it kept me from making any videos. But today I wanted to show you guys something that's happening that's, that's a little bit anomalous. But these are the kind of things that happen on farms. We'll get into what that is coming up next on The Urban Farmer. Today, I've decided that I'm going to terminate some crops. A big chunk of the plot next door, and I'll show you that in a second. First, I'll explain why. Right now, I'm going through and taking stock in the cooler. It's something I often do on Thursday mornings before we go and do a big harvest. First thing I do in the morning on Thursdays is I go through my what I expect sh my orders are going to be. That's based on last week's information. And my orders trickle in in the morning. But to give me a framework of what I think we're going to need to harvest, I put together a tally together. And so I have all these totals of crops that I'm going to harvest. And before I go out in the field and harvest them, I want to compare it to what we have in stock in the cooler. So right now I'm just pulling out stuff you can see here. And there's some spoilage here for sure. And uh, I'm just comparing it to things like, I say I got some carrots there. I need another 50 pounds of carrots, so we have to go harvest more carrots today. And I'm pulling out, I'm looking at all this stuff here. And we are sitting on a lot of patty pan squash right now. And that's not really that uncommon in the summer, especially at this point where we're, the, we're peak summer, really. We're the early part of August and I'm going, okay, I think we're producing too many patty pans right now. So the fact that I'm sitting on this much, especially I'm sitting on some premium stuff, means that we're not selling all that we're producing. And on a farm our size, we're on a third of an acre with our total land mass. It means that if there's stuff I'm not selling, I'm producing too much of that crop. And I could potentially change that to produce something more of what we do need. And we are planning to have a really strong winter season this year. And I'm looking at all these patty pans and going, well, maybe I'm better off pulling them out and putting something else in that could be useful in the winter. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, well, Mark's here picking. And you know, it's peak, it's peak patty pan season and so they produce a lot. If you don't, if you skip two days of picking zucchinis, they go, well, they'll go from this to this in two days. So they become, they become a bit of a nuisance and we can't really get a good price for them at that large size, so it's, it's hardly worth our while. And you know, you can't even give them all, because give them away, because every gardener has zucchinis in the summer, right? So it's time to pull them out. So what we're gonna do is Mark's just picking them clean right now and then we're gonna kill we're gonna pull out two of these rows we're gonna leave the ones around the perimeter because I can't get any beds in there anyways and so we'll we're gonna just pick them clean snip them at the bottom and then pull them out later in the day or tomorrow if we have time so it's just kind of a tough decision you have to make but it's not really a big deal when you look at it we've we've made some money on them crop's been productive but right now we're just spending too much time picking them and if we're spending the time picking them and not selling them all then we're not making money on them really so that's the thing because it's we're probably spending a half an hour a day on these and probably and more that time will stack if you miss them for a day or two and so it's just not economical at this point one of the thing that we're going to do in this plot as well which is another termination is We've had some really poor germination on these beds here as well as these two beds and this is because we had an irrigation line that blew, a drip line that blew and it went unnoticed. So I didn't really notice it for a, a few days at probably a critical time for when these were germinating and I was sitting here wondering why is this 
germination so poor and it's because of that drip line and so it just kind of went unnoticed for a while so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to well this radish bed I'm just going to let it go because it's almost mature it, it was a, a pretty thin germination but I'm just going to wait till it harvests next week and then turn it over but in the meantime this arugula bed I'm going to terminate so I'm just going to flame weed over top of it or flame weed it and then just replant it to something else and the same with these two beds they had really poor germination as well and this is one of the problems with drip irrigation it's it's like the thing that I hate about drip is that you can easily um, not notice certain things so what happened here is one, one of these lines came undone and it was just pouring out water so the drip wasn't filling up with enough pressure to uh, get water out all of the emitters and so you know I think it was probably over a week that this was going on without us noticing I kept coming out here to hand water to germinate them which is often what I do with drip but that wasn't good enough because it just the beds weren't getting watered enough so so a bit of a crop loss a bit of a, a crop failure but that's how it goes it's not really a big deal no point in getting no point in whining about it and complaining about it just fix the problem and move on just finishing up washing a ton of greens this is the last batch there but I just got a shipment that I'm very excited about just got a shipment from BCS whole new machine rototiller rotary plow and one special machine that I can't tell you about right now but I can tell you that I have been collaborating with the folks down at BCS America and I have a prototype for a new implement and that's all I can say right now but I expect if all goes well you guys will be hearing about it soon enough check that out it's kind of sad actually it reminds me of that scene in old yeller when the dad has to go out and kill the dog and uh, you know it's horrible but had to be done the way it, the way it basically the situation was that we're picking these patty pans and zucchinis every week and they're not selling and they're just going in the compost pile so it's just a tough reality these are tough decisions you have to make as a farmer that you know I can get another two 30 inch beds in there I'm, I'm way better off putting some fall crops in there that I know I can sell than hoping to sell some patty pans and even the thing is too it's like well Curtis why don't you call a bunch of restaurants and see if they'll take them the problem is it's a saturated market right now everybody's got patty pans everybody's got tons of patty pans so competing in a saturated market is just a race to the bottom so it's just it's not even worth my time I mean call it as a loss you know I kept some I'll have I've got a few rows here around the side I've got the two rows between the row between my greenhouses still so I still have some but this it'll be more effective for me to get these beds into some better production so now I'm gonna go and open up this BCS and see what we got so that's the rotary plow something I'm going to try uh, near the end of the season and going into next season is a technique where you so if you guys follow Jean Martin Fortier's work what he does is he makes raised beds with a rotary plow and he basically plows up the walkways into the beds to make a raised bed so for myself and my climate a raised bed is not advantageous however what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill my walkways each year with wood chips with new freshly ground finely ground wood chips I can get them from a mill here and they're going to be in the the paths like I'm talking two or three inches deep they're going to stay in the paths all season that's going to reduce weed pressure and then what happens with this there's a name for this technique if it what it's called uh, farmers have been doing it for a while it's nothing new and you leave the the footpaths for the season and then they sit all winter and they decompose you get winter rains the chips rot down and then next season you rotary plow them back into the beds so it's essentially uh, a kind of passive way of adding compost to your soil and has a double effect of keeping the weeds in your in your walkways down so that's what the rotary plow is going to be for
Okay, so I still got to put the implements on. And this is all I'm going to show you guys because one of these implements is a is a custom job that I came up with the concept for and like I can't show you just yet. We have to trial it out and uh, figure out if there's anything else that needs to be changed for it, but I just wanted to show you one thing that these guys did for me, which I'm super stoked on, is they gave me a, I, 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 I got a special kind of wheel. I got a short, I got a short and fat wheel because I want to minimize the amount of compaction I do on my beds because I'm doing no-till or very shallow low-till. So I got these wheels that are a wider set. I can even adjust the, 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 the width of the axle. But the wheels are short and fat so that they basically sit right near the edge of my bed so I get the least amount of compaction in my beds as possible. So that was a, a custom thing they did for me. And uh, you know, just getting this out of the box, it looks pretty sweet. Very excited. BCS is a pretty awesome company. Even the old machine I had, I had since I started and it's still good. I sold it to a friend of mine. These machines will last you a lifetime and they'll last you even more if you treat them right. So that's the key. So I'm, I feel like a kid in Christmas right now. I got a lot of uh, wrapping paper to put away and uh, gonna go experiment with this puppy.